five foods. Okay. Sure. Good evening, Miguel. Good evening, Mario. Good evening, Marcos. Good evening, Marcos. How do you do? What? He's a day very tired. <laughs> <laughs> tired. Tired. Why? Yes, I am going in six or six mm. well, yes. hours work yeah. yes mm. the warehouse is... um, i am work uh, friday last friday i work to the seven i am seven o'clock i am to ten o'clock p.m oh. wow. 15 hours <laughs> Yeah, you are younger. Yeah, but, uh, because I know I know you're in the class. Uh, uh, Friday. Yes, I remember that. Oh. Yeah. Do you have to travel yeah. to medicaments? <laughs> the clinic. And they are we are we are like in the platform. Are you finished? Are you finished first section? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I not understand the free section. Oh the first. it's very difficult. Yeah, then yes. because I don't, uh, I not understand, I not stay in the class to the last Friday. Hello. Okay. Hello. 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 Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good evening. Good evening, Miss Good evening, teacher. How are you doing today? Good evening, today? teacher. Welcome. Thank you for your puntuality, Miguel, Marcos, Marielos, and also Milton, Luis, Alex. And Adriana, thank you, thank you for being here in the class. I appreciate it so much. Alex, this is your first time with us? Yes, teacher, the, the, dos, the, two, the two last, <laughs> last class, I, I, I cannot uh, to connect. Oh, okay, I understand, thank you. Thank you, but you could connect today, that's good. Okay, thank you, Alex. Okay, now guys, um, we're going to continue with the section one, the final part of the section one, that is um, electronics vocabulary. And then we're going to start the section number two, because we need to finish. So we started classes Thursday, then we uh, were in classes Friday. So that means every week we have four classes, okay? Okay. And every week we need to finish something in the platform. So the first week we're supposed to finish the section one and the section two. Okay. So this week, uh, today I'm going to start section two and tomorrow I'm going to finish section two because by tomorrow we need to complete the first two sections. And then the next week, we're going to go with section three, I guess. Then we go with section four and then with five. Yes, that's how it is. Okay, now let me, oh, I'm sorry. Send me here in the chat, what is the date today? Okay, what is the date today? Send it here to the chat and remember to choose Inglés Corporativo. Okay. Please. Don't forget to choose Inglés Corporativo because if not, you're giving away the, the date. <clears throat> we have only had two classes, right? Yes, two classes only. 
Thursday, because we started on Thursday, and then Friday. Yeah, I think that was, that's it. And I hope you had a great weekend, guys, because we all need to have some breaks. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Okay, remember, because I'm looking at the same problem again, remember that when we write the date in English, it's different than the one in Spanish. Because in Spanish, we first say the date and then we say the month. But in English, first we say the month and then we say the date. And also remember that the first letter of the days of the week and the months of the year need to be capital letters, okay? Okay, now let's go here. Wait a second. Oh, before we start, do you have problems in the platform? Have you found any problems in the platform or not? Yeah. Yo nada más que no entiendo cómo hacer la primera parte de todos los ejercicios porque como no estuve en, la, en el viernes, no entiendo qué es lo que hay que hacer. The first part in the exercises. Yes. So, for example, now let's check one. El, the 1.2, do you understand it or not? The one point one. One point two, I mean. One point one is the is the class. Okay, let me check. So I'm gonna share my screen. Que comió en el mediodía, que siento que le hizo daño porque está vomitando. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, don't worry. <laughs> okay, now here, guys. This tablecloth isn't very clean. It's, remember that we're going to use the verb P. It's, of course, is it's. And then we're going to use the verb in the past participle. Do you remember that? To report problems, for example, when we say it's broken, the window is broken. So the past participle of stain is stained, like that, okay? So this is what we need to do here. You're going, it's, it says in the instructions, read comments from customers in a restaurant. You may write your sentences with the past participle or with nouns. Sometimes you're going to use nouns. Use forms of the word in the parentheses. So in this case, disabled cloth isn't very clean. And in the parentheses, we have a verb. So it means that we're going to place the verb or we're going to write the verb in the past participle. Then we submit and see, it's correct. And I don't know if it will work without the period at the end. Let me see, no, it doesn't work. So remember to write the period at the end like that. Because sometimes the platform doesn't allow to have only the, the words and not the period, period at the end, okay? Try to do it. Okay, now, any more questions? Okay, thank you. Nope. Okay, let's start today's class. Let me share this. Oh, and I'm gonna do just a few and, and a quick review about yesterday's, I mean, last week's topic about need and keep. Okay, so describing problems. We were talking like when we are describing problems, we use the gerund or keep or need. It refers to repetitive action also follows the verb need. Need with a passive means the same thing. The thing is here. So keep 
burning or keeps going off, like the example we listened in the conversation we practiced, okay? So you need to write keep or need, either of one of these verbs. And to give action to the next verb, okay? So you're gonna write the verb with the ing form to give the action. So it keeps burning. Basically in Spanish, it's like you say, sigue quemándose. That's what you're saying. Sigue quemando. Or keeps going off. Se sigue apagándose o sigue encendiéndose. Okay, so keeps going off. That's what you're saying here. In needs, you're saying necesita reparación. Necesita ajuste. That's what you're saying when it says the oven needs adjusting. So we have the verb need here. And that this verb needs to go with the ing form. So here we were doing these examples in the last class. For example, the walls need what? To be painted. To be painted, yes, we can painted. say need, need to be painted, painting. or the walls need painting. Both, painting. Are, both are correct. Remember yes. that we were saying that. So we can use the past participle or we can use the ing form. So the walls need ne painting. Fine. Or you can say, you can say, I mean, the walls Fine. need to be painted, yep. like that, okay? So both sentences are correct. In the first one, we're saying, las paredes necesitan pintura, o pintarse. In the second one, we're saying, the, las paredes necesitan ser pintadas. That's what we are saying in both sentences. Both structures are correct, and it depends on you which one you're going to use. Okay, that was the, that was uh, the, last class. The, what is it? Uh, is necessary adding the letter S for nil or no? Yeah, it can be necessary, but in this case, we're talking about a plural, the walls. But if okay. we were talking about the wall, yeah. For example, we're talking just about only one. In that case... Yes, I will say the wall needs painting because in this case is it, the pronoun. But in the case of the walls is they, the pronoun, right? Is it clear now, Alex? Yes, it's clear. Okay, perfect. Now let's go with today's topic. Wait a second. Okay, now, share. We have vocabulary practice today. So 1.10, vocabulary, electronics. That's the topic we're gonna be looking at today. And the date as you send it to the chat. Remember always, day first month, then the date, and finally we add the year. Okay, so it's Monday, February 28th, 2022. Okay, now let's go here to the vocabulary practice. Oh, and also guys, I have a question for you. Have you been practicing the tongue twister we were practicing for pronunciation? Yeah? Did you keep on practicing or not? I remember uh, the three tongue twister the, uh, of the uh, last model, the model yeah. one. It was the last module tongue twister. I think it was this one different. So remember, this is pronunciation practice to exercise the muscles in the mouth. So what we need to do in this one is to try to say word by word first. And then when we have completed 
the pronunciation of every single word, we can add speed to speak a little bit faster. These tongue twisters, they will help you to improve your pronunciation skills because you are training the, your vocal cords and you're training the muscles in your mouth. So I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go with pronunciation one more time because the new the new people that just connected today. What is this? <gasps> wow, look at that. Es uno que se desaparece. Peter. Peter. Piper. Picked. A peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the pack of pickled peppers? Peter Piper picked. So now I'm gonna go a little bit faster. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. A pack of pickled, the, at the end, pickled, Peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, where's the pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper, Peter Piper picked? Okay, take a screenshot because we're gonna practice one more time because we practice on Thursday, but we didn't practice on Friday. So we're gonna practice. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, let's go. Practice, remember, we're gonna practice in this moment. Ernesto, you have to join the breaker room, please.
Hello, Luis, what happened? I mean, Lorena. Lorena. Yes, it's me. What happened, Lorena? I don't know. I, I'm in a, in a, in a, in a, in, in close the Zoom. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to send you to the breakout room number two. You can join there, the breakout room. Glenda, what happened? Hi, hola. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. What about you? I'm very good. What What happened with you? You weren't here in the classes yet the last week, right? Uh, yes, my my niece uh -huh. is going to get married. So you're busy. <laughs> Um, yes, a little bit. Mm -hmm. On Friday, I couldn't see the the message. Ah, okay. And mm -hmm. and I was in the traffic. I oh. saw the message in, at night. Very very um, late. Okay, okay, I understand. Well, but good thing you're here with Thank us you. now. Excellent. Okay, you. so your classmates are practicing right now, so I'm going to send you to one breaker room so you can practice with them, okay? Okay, okay, miss, thank you. Mm -hmm. Marcos, what happened? Marcos. Hola, Miss. Lo que pasa es que estoy en el teléfono y ahorita me acabo de encender la computadora y me tiro directamente a esta sala. No sé por qué razón. Ah, ok, ok. Pero ya se va a salir del... ¿Se va a salir tu dispositivo o no? Sí, solo estoy terminando la práctica del Don Twister. Va, ahí está ahorita. Ya lo mandé ahí. Bueno. Ok.
Hello. 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 So you were practicing a little bit of the tongue twister. Remember, that is going to help you with your pronunciation. That is not something grammarly. And sometimes the tongue twister, don't, they don't make sense. So it's like oh, random words. But the important thing is that they help you to improve your pronunciation, right? That's the most important thing. Right now, guys, I'm going to do a review of a topic that maybe you know already. Do you remember the passive voice? Yes. Okay. What is the passive voice, guys? Uh -huh. What is the passive voice? The subject is uh, second voice. Um, the, uh, the either is fifth voice. Okay, the what? The reader. Subject is fifth voice. In passive voice, subject is, is second voice. Is uh, de lo que estamos hablando. Mm, is fifth yeah. voice. Yeah, you have the idea, Miguel. You have the idea. You have the idea. Thank you very much. So, yes, maybe um, in other words, we can say that in the passive voice, we pay specific attention to the object more than to the subject, right? So, for example, in a simple statement, it will be, I drive my car, right? I drive my car. In this case, I'm paying specific attention to I, this my, me, this is me, this is the person who does the action. And the object of my action, okay, remember that the object in a sentence is where the action is going. So the object of my action is my car. But in the passive voice is the other way around. What I need to do in the passive voice is to pay specific attention or it's more important to mention the object. So the object is the most important thing in the sentence. So my car, it's going to be the main part of the sentence, my car. Then I'm gonna need for an auxiliary, for example, the verb to be in this case. And I'm gonna say that my car is dri then, sorry, sorry. Then the verb is not in the, I don't know, the base form. In this case, I'm gonna use the verb in the past participle, okay? Past participle. So the past participle of dry is driven, drive, driven. So my car is driven by, so I'm gonna use by to talk about me, but in this case, I'm not the subject of the sentence, I'm the object of the sentence. So my car is driven by me. So what Miguel was trying to say is that, that in this case, what is the most important thing is my car, the object of the sentence. So in that case, I'm gonna pay specific attention to that part. Did you know about this topic already, guys? Yes or no? <laughs> do it like this, yes. Do it like this, no. So, so, so. yes. So, so, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> so, so. So, I'm reminding yes. you. Yes. Okay, thank you, Milton. I'm reminding you about this topic because this topic is going to be important in the section two. The past participle of the verbs is something that you need to pay attention to. And also you need to pay attention to the object on a sentence, okay? Just to have that in mind. But now I want you guys to watch a video. We're gonna watch a video in this moment. This is okay. the video of section two. 
intro video to section two. I'm going to play the video here for you, but pay attention because then we're going to discuss some questions about this. Okay. Let's see. Then most of the. Remember, you may watch the video as many times as you need to. Sit back and relax. One of the most remote nations on Earth threatened by rising water levels has today experienced the damaging impact of what's known as a king tide. Tuvalu is a small group of islands 10,000 miles and 11 time zones away in the South Pacific. Islanders fear that the area could disappear within 50 years if action isn't taken over climate change. Well, our environment correspondent, David Shukman, has travelled to the islands and we can join David there now. Hugh, thank you. It's a stormy time here in the heat of the South Pacific. Just the combination of high tides and strong winds that people dread because Tuvalu is so low in the water. It really does run the risk of becoming the first country to fall victim to the way our climate is now changing. Incredibly beautiful, but incredibly vulnerable. The fragile strips of green that make up this country only just break the surface of the ocean. But for how much longer? The mighty waves of the Pacific pound the shoreline during what's called a king tide, the highest tides of the year, and the effects can be devastating. This is the island's main road. I mean, we've never seen this in the past, uh, water coming all the way up to this far. And our house is just up behind us. But the water also surges up from underground through the coral the islands are built on. In the space of an hour, the lowest areas are all flooded. Everyone feels the impact. This priest steps carefully through the waters on his way to conduct a funeral. The higher the king tides get, the harder it is to keep things going here. So can you grow anything here? No. Because it's too salty? Yeah, too salty. Okay. The seawater is poisoning the soil and people are nervous. It makes me feel scary. So what will happen to us in 10 years' time? This isn't like other floods that I've covered with a single catastrophic event. Instead, it's a creeping process with this seawater flowing up into the heart of these islands and slowly, but effectively, killing them off. The water bubbles up in tiny streams and everywhere you look, it just lies on the surface. And the problem is getting worse. At the harbour, the rising swell is monitored by an Australian system. The measurements go back 15 years. And at the local Met office, they say the king tides are getting higher, a trend forecast to continue. In prediction, the next five to ten years, the king tide getting worse and getting higher than normal, then most of the coastal areas would be washed out. The implications are alarming. A typical high tide reaches about two and a half metres. A king tide like now can be more than three. The UN Climate Panel forecasts a rise of another half metre when the highest point is only about four and a half metres. Now for Tuvalu, each scenario would cost precious land. Only a small rise would see parts of the island go under, perhaps even the runway, a lifeline to the outside world. How long have you got? Not more than 50 years. In fact, some of the islands have already disappeared. Please help us. You cause climate change. You know, the pool of the pays principle must apply. You must give, set up a global fund to which these islands can come and tap into to build their resilience, to build their capacity, the education, technology, and all that, and restore what the damage has been done. People here say there must be a technological fix if a rich country like Dubai can build entirely new islands especially since these are so narrow, you can cross from one side to the other in a few short paces. The problem, they're founded on coral, which is porous. Saving these islands will cost a fortune. 
For the children of Tuvalu, the floods are fun. But for them to lead their lives on these islands will require massive international support. And with just 11,000 people here, will the outside world think it's worth it? Now, of course, Tuvalu does get some aid, but not nearly enough to keep the rising sea at bay. So the international community faces very soon a difficult choice of whether to draw a line between those who get saved and those who don't. And in the meantime, people here are getting ready for another king tide. It's right now it's low. It's due to get very high in about eight hours' time. Back to you. Okay, did you understand what they were talking about in the video or do you need to watch it again? I need to watch it again. You need to watch it again? Repeat, please. Yes. Watch okay. it again, teacher. Okay. It's more complicated. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. I know, I know. It's a, because you are in a in a different level right now. So I'm gonna send you the link to this video, okay? And we're gonna watch it in groups. So oh. who here is in a computer? Okay, Marcos. Jasmine, you too? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna do two groups. And then when we finish that, okay? When we finish watching that, then you're gonna, okay, just wait a second. Then you're gonna discuss with your classmates what you did understand about the video, okay? To make a significant knowledge, yeah. Or build a knowledge. Okay, let me see. So we are Jasmine and Marcos. They can share the screen. Let me see. Okay. Okay, let's go.
Tomate, but not nearly enough to keep the rising sea at bay. So the international community faces very soon a difficult choice of whether to draw a line between those who get saved and those who don't. And in the meantime, people here are getting ready for another king tide. It's right now it's low. It's due to get very high in about eight hours' time. Back to you in the studio. David, thank you very much. David Schuchman there, our environment correspondent uh, in Tuvalu. In fact, some of the islands have already disappeared. Please help us. You cause climate change. You know, the pull of the pace principle must apply. You must give, set up a global fund to which these islands can come and tap into to build their resilience, to build their capacity.
What happened, Marcos? Did you finish watching the video? Yes. Okay. Miss, are you eating now? Mm, no. Oh. Es que le estaba escuchando como que se estaba comiendo algo. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's really late. I don't eat at, at this time. <laughs> I eat earlier. I eat before I start the class. This is too late for me to be eating. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to class your classmates right now. Okay. Hello. Okay, so just before we go, I need one person at least, one person at least to share what did you understand about the video? And then we can go. Just one person. Teacher. Okay. Uh uh, the four oration uh, to Alu is sinking in 50 years. Uh, the problem is salt water pollutes and destroy natural habitants and farmland. Is uh, Isla to Alu is sinking, is a problem, environment problem is. Um, Ice polar and calentamiento. Warming. Warming. But calentamiento global is global warming. Global warming is a problem. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Thank you very much. Yes, they were talking about a problem that is the um, the island is sinking actually. And they are mentioning that in Dubai, they build islands out of nowhere. So they will need help. If someone could help them, they will need all the help they can get. Okay, tomorrow we're gonna emphasize on that topic of the passive voice. So don't forget to be here tomorrow, okay? Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. See bye you tomorrow. Bye. Good night. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Bye-bye. See you. See you. Tomorrow.